Hi there, my name is Jason. Today, I would like to give you a brief introduction of the paper TaxGN, Improving Tax Encoder via Graph Neural Network in Sponsor Search, that I worked with my colleagues at Microsoft and Stanford. Sponsor Search refers to the business model of search engine platforms where third-party sponsored information is shown to targeted users along with other organic search results. This allows advertisers such as manufacturers or retailers to increase the exposure of their products to more targeted potential buyers. And at the same time, gives users a quicker access to solutions for their needs. Hence, it has become an indispensable part of our modern web experience. To understand users' needs, Tax encoder models such as BERT or CDSSM are used on user tax query inputs or keywords from the ads. Existing models rely on semantic features, but sometimes they still find long tail, low frequency queries or ads to be more challenging to work with. Given the strong performance of the baseline models in natural language understanding tasks, it would be extremely difficult to further improve them solely based on the structural changes of the model without introducing new complement information. That's why we are introducing graph neural network here, which introduces a natural way of incorporating behavioral information, such as historical logs on clicks. The goal of this study is to combine the strong language model tax encoders with graph new information processed by graph neural networks to achieve stronger performance and generate more robust representation vectors than each of its individual components. Note that we are proposing a very general framework where we could easily combine popular individual components. The tax encoders can be CDSSM, BERT, or TwinBERT, and the GNN parts can be GraphSage, GAT, or other GN structures. This can be very flexible and you can combine them on your own depending on your own applications. Let me talk about the model architecture first. The traditional input information of the model is the text of a query and keyword of the ads. And the model outputs a score for the relevance. In sponsored search scenario, we have tens of millions of candidates ads. And it is infeasible to use a complex text encoder to compute the similarity between a search query and each of the ads one by one at a time. In this case, Twin Tower structure is a good choice for us where we could compute ads representation vectors in advance. And when a query comes, we can then compute the representation vectors of the query online. We don't need to repeatedly calculate the uh, ad size. We designed the structure of the TaxGN model to be simple, effective, and efficient, which is a natural extension of the high-performance CDSSM or TwinBird baseline model with additional information from graph structure data. We augment the input query and keywords, each with three additional neighbors that go through the same tax encoder and then having an additional step of GN aggregation. So the aggregated factor contains the original query or keyword and their neighbor's information. This aggregated factor are then feed into cross layers to calculate the relevant score similar to the baseline models. Again, the structure is very flexible so that the weights between the two towers can be shared or not shared depending on your application and the needs or the constraint of the system. As we have the same tax encoder parts as many popular models, we could even load the pre-trained bird or twin bird ways and then fine tune to speed up the, with the, speed up the training and come up with better performing models. As you can imagine, the training of the model can be challenging and data hungry. And at the same time, to productionize the model, it needs to be efficient. Hence, we use the knowledge distillation method where we have a large-scale, high-performance robot model as a teacher model 
to automatically label a large number of examples with a continuous output score instead of the binary labels. This should provide more fine-grained information. Just imagine that a relevant score of 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and 0 0.5 will all be concluded as positive examples, but definitely from the model outputs, it contains different level of relevance. So we use this continuous score to train the much compact student text gen model. And this in general will perform better than having a small sample with binary score. So this training framework give us a huge training sample without costly human labeling and ends up with a small efficient model that performs very similar to, or sometimes even better than the large strong model, which is fantastic. Now, having the structure and the training method in mind, you might be wondering how do we actually find the neighbors in the graph? So we construct the neighbor graph based on the historical click log information. For each query or keyword, we pick the top three click neighbors based on the historical click through rates. For example, I'm showing you an example where we need to find three neighbors for query USPS come careers logging. So the top three neighbors in the historical logs are United States Postal Service jobs, USPS come employment, and Postal Service hiring. These are actually keywords of ads that have been clicked in historical uh, historical logs. These are all relevant keywords to the original query. The neighbors need to satisfy the threshold to have at least been shown to the user 50 times. This is for robustness. And are then sorted by click-through rates as a proxy for relevance. Imagine that for the second example, uh, even though it is it has shown much more times than the first one. Uh, comparing the click through it, it is still lower than the first one. So that's why we have the United States Postal Service job as the first neighbor. So we use a click through rate as an implicit feedback from the users uh, as, a, the, as a measurement of the relevance. And there are cases where we have queries that are hard to find any ads that have been shown and clicked many times. In this case, we use a semantic AN to identify similar queries with neighbors, and then use the neighbor of the AN as a proxy neighbors. So AN is approximate near, nearest neighbors. So in this case, the query video games computers free, we cannot find any keywords in historical logs that has been clicked many times. So we use AN to find a semantically meaningful and, and very similar query, which is no internet games. And for this query, we do find three neighbors keywords that is free game, online games, online computer games. And we found that using AN, we can find neighbors that are also very relevant to the original query uh, as can be shown from this example. So we observe strong performance of the text gen model, even when comparing to the extremely good twin birth model. In this graph, we break the example into three beans by their ads frequency in our sample. So the first three bars are the ones that only show up once in our sample, which corresponding to the most rare ads. We use the frequency of this ads showing in our sample as a proxy for the true frequency of those ads showing up in the larger sample. So we see that text gen model show an extremely large improvement in the first category, the rarest ads. And you should notice that this, even though they only show up once, they consist of 43% of the total example. So this is actually the majority uh, traffic. So performance downgrades in more common ones when we don't use AAM. Our hypothesis is that in the more common, in those more common examples, the semantic information is already good, and the limited additional information from a very sparse graph 
is not enough to offset the potential underfitting from a more complex model. So once we adopt AN to generate a more complete graph, we see that the texture model demonstrates stronger performance than the baseline across the board. We have also uh, test these models in online A-B testing, and we observe more than 2% increase uh, in the revenue and more than 2.3% decrease in SD fact rate, which is fantastic as a performance metric. So lastly, I would like to show you a few case study examples which demonstrate some iteration why GN could help. Those are examples where our baseline Trimbert model fails, uh, but the uh, text GN model gets it correct. So in the first example, we see that the existing Trimbert model incorrectly associates the Greek mythology Achilles heel with recovery shoes. From the semantic meaning, heel is very close to shoes, and Achilles ankle is actually a phrase highly re uh, related to the pain of tendon. However, the neighbors strongly indicate that people who search for this query are actually looking for the story from the Greek mythology and not the foot injury. The second false positive example is where twin birth determines that animal repellent product is highly uh, relevant to remove animal ador, which are the animal cleaning product. From the semantic meaning, it is true that repellent is close meaning to the word remove, but the two products are used for completely different purposes. So when averaging over the neighbors, it is very clear that this is actually a negative example. Now, in this example, the query word sharding is actually a very specific concept in database system on uh, how large database system uh, split the data and store the data. So without the domain knowledge, it is actually very hard to understand such an uncommon word, even for human uh, and also for computer. So for, furthermore, the word is then tokenized to the classification token SHA, RDI, NG, and the separation token by the BIRDS uh, word piece tokenizer, making it essentially an impossible task for the twin bird to identify the relevance. However, from the historical user behaviors, we clearly see both sides taking the very important common words database hence allowing the text gen model to leverage on user behavioral to identify domain-specific connections and find the hidden relevance. Lastly, the second false negative one is an example of two video editing software on the Mac platform. Without the domain knowledge, it is impossible to conclude from the semantic meaning that Adobe Premiere Mac is a video editing software. However, since the query string is identified as a neighbor of the keyword, our graph model can use this information to find the correct information. So that's all for my presentation. I hope I have given you a brief and quick overview of our paper and ho hopefully that give you some experience inspirations of how GN can help with the text encoders in the application of sponsored search. If you are interested, definitely please go to the full paper for more details and please feel free to contact me uh, if you have any questions. Thank you so much for time and attention. Thank you, bye-bye.